Yeah. Yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. And it is Judd's Hockey Show. Judd, A.J. Fredrickson. Um, we are recording this on a Friday. The Wild plays the Blues tomorrow. And if you're wondering why we didn't do a podcast after that Kings game a couple of nights ago, do you really have to ask why we didn't do one? Do you really have to ask why we wouldn't do a podcast after the team gets absolutely drubbed 6-0? And um, I would like to say, though, congratulations to all of you homers out there who tried to tell us that the Wild didn't get some bounces. Matt Zuccarello having the audacity to talk about, yeah, you know, and then to, to, so Matt Zuccarello tried to say, we actually didn't play that, that bad. And then at the end, he doubled down and took a cheap shot by saying, but of course you guys are the hockey experts. No, Matt, you didn't show up. Brodeen's out, Erickson X out. Guess what? Too damn bad. Guys are playing, teams are playing shorthanded constantly now. That was a embarrassment. That was another, that just like that Nashville game, when, when you guys are even close to, okay, now it's go time, you take a huge step back. Um, age, just for clarity's sake now. So yeah. the Wild, 76 points. The Blues, who beat the Senators, on Thursday night, 77 points. Playoff spot number two in the West goes to the Vegas Golden Knights, 81 points. They uh, they did not play a great game, but they beat Seattle. In fact, I, I watched the entire game last night. So the Wild now, with um, 12 games left, is five points back of a playoff spot. The Blues, 12 games left. The Golden Knights, a game in hand. The Kings, who are only two points up on the uh, Golden Knights, 83 points also a game in hand at 69 games played. Long story short, though, um, yes, it hurts to have Brodeen out. Yes, it hurts to have Eck out. But all of that being said, what the hell is it about this team? Because the Nashville game was the same way. What is it about this team that just when it's like, okay, you're going to have to buckle down now yep. uh-huh. and really, really play well, but you're beating up on bad teams? They just absolutely go in the toilet. There's no other way to put it. They go in the toilet. I don't. I, I don't understand it. Um, first off, I'm still waiting on my formal apology from the team because you, you had your West Coast swing and you had a nine o'clock, nine o seven puck drop against Anaheim, and then you got on Wednesday night a nine twenty six Central Time puck drop, which should be illegal because I know myself. You included. A lot of wild fans are honest, hardworking people that have to get up early yeah, but, before that sun is rising. Yeah, and they don't want to stay up, but then they perform like they did. Right. That's zero right. loss. That's the thing. Like, yeah. Late a late puck drop is one thing, but the to then lose six to nothing and look as bad as you did, the first right. five minutes were was competitive. I think it, I think I saw you actually were like you, the TNT crew was comment uh was commentating Playoff on temple. it. It was a playoff tempo, and it looked like it. I was bamboozled after that first five minutes because I I thought the Wild were going to come out and compete with a team that they needed to get points off of. They were going to maybe keep this hot streak going that they've been on. You know, they're pushing all this stuff. And then that uh, kind of Plinko goal gets in. Uh, a, a nice redirection, honestly, by the Kings Over to put up yeah. 1-0. And then, yeah. you know, ah, you know what, guys, fair play. Go ahead. You, you, you take all the points. We don't even want to try the, it was it was just a sad sad effort from the wild on Wednesday night out uh, out in LA and to your point last night the uh, the Vegas Golden Knights would you believe that a, a a team that's good that's going to that's expected to make the playoffs that has this kind of winning mentality when they need points even when they play like you said not their greatest game they find a way to get the two points and win Yep. crazy that's crazy well, that that a team is able to just kind of dig deep and make points happen um yep. and i think that is firsthand exactly why you're going to see the wild right outside of that playoff bubble because they've had chances now in the past week a couple games where it's like hey you're missing guys you're down you're, you're kind of handcuffed here you need to get points they cannot rise to the occasion vegas absolutely they they will rise to the occasion and then some and that's why that's why you're going to see coming down to the stretch here the wild are just going to come up short And I want them to so badly now. First of all, the Golden Knights, the, the Golden Knights are going to get Thomas Hurdle back at some point here. Okay, uh, Mark Stone is hurt pretty badly. I'm not sure when he's back, but the fact is, when I watch the Golden Knights play, 
I, as a hockey fan, I want to see them in the playoffs. I want to see them get that eighth spot. I mm-hmm. don't want to see the Blues as much. Definitely do not want to see the Wild at all. Um, as a hockey fan, the Vegas Golden Knights belong. But the level of disgust that I have for what the, the Wild did against Nashville and what they did against the Kings. And by the way, just to be very clear, the Wild played the Ducks, who are forfeiting points left and right. They do not give a damn. I'll I'll give the Kraken this. They still care. The Kraken last night against the Golden Knights played a hard game. Mm -hmm. The game, I believe that there's one or two games. I think it's one game left against the Kraken for the Wild will not be simple. Um, The Kraken still care. But just to be clear, the Wild played the Ducks down the freeway and then played the Kings. The Kings also played the night before. Didn't play great, but of course they beat the Blackhawks because the Blackhawks, like the Sharks and the Ducks, are forfeiting points. But both teams had played the night before. Nobody had to travel far. The Wild, they literally took a bus. Uh, The Kings stayed home. And you came out and you put on another absolutely despicable performance. Yeah, Brodeen being out hurts. I get that. But to roll over like that, and then for Zuccarello to have the audacity to say anything other than, and usually Matt's, Matt's is usually up front. So I don't know what that crap was because I will give him this. Matt Zuccarello is not usually an excuse maker, but he was in this case, you know, and then you guys know hockey. You're the experts. Okay. First of all, bleep off. I uh, just say what you say that you guys didn't show up. And if, if you want to say, you know what, Bro- Brodeen's out. And quite frankly, we are too mentally weak to stand that. Just say that I'm yep. fine with that. Okay. Yes. That's who you are. Then that tells us all who you are, but, and now they got the blues tomorrow. And let's talk about that game. They got okay. the Blues afternoon tilt at the X. Because my guess is they're going to come out hair afire. They're going to come out blazing. They're going to tell you we're not dead yet. There's only 12 games left, but we're not dead yet. They might win. They might lose. They will play a hard, aggressive game. Um, Brodeen will not play. I they're, they're trying to say he might come back early next week. But, I mean, the man's leg buckled b- below him on an, mm-hmm. on an unnecessarily cheap hit. I yeah. didn't like the hit. For all of you who were like, why wasn't there a, a penalty called? I have a very simple question. Was that going to make it okay? Like his leg buckled. Once his leg buckled, call the penalty. Don't. I didn't like the hit. Um, Eric Sinek mm-hmm. might come back, might not. My guess is he won't. I don't know what's wrong there, but my guess is, like the Wilds always like, oh, guys are on the precipice of returning. They're just going to return. And then, of course, they don't. Um, mm-hmm. But the Wild will come out and prove that they will play, that they can play a more complete game than they did against the Kings because they didn't show up. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. This is what I keep saying. You know, every time they go on a little streak and beat the Ducks, it's like, oh, there might be something here. No, there's not. What? <laughs> wise up. Me too. Me too. I'm, I, I'm pointing the finger at myself. Wise up. This should be over. Just mail it in. I don't care. And everybody who played on on uh, Wednesday against the Kings, you owe the flower. Mark andre Fleury an apology because, yes, he was going to have a game like that. No, he was not at the age of 39 going to continue playing great. But my God, you talk about a guy that got no support. You gave him, you basically treated a Hall of Fame first ballot goaltender like he just came up from Kalamazoo and you didn't know his name. That was a disgusting performance. And what's going to make me want to puke in the press box tomorrow is the fact that they're now going to come back and say, we're not done yet. We're going to play hard. And 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 the apologists are going to say, see, the wild's back. And I'm going to be sick to my stomach tomorrow Go because you're exactly right. We're going to see somebody drop the gloves in the first couple of minutes and we're going to set the tempo. And like you said, we're digging our heels in, guys. We're not going anywhere. That pl- last playoff spot is still up for grabs. We've yeah. got time. We've got 12 games. Let's go over those 12 games, Judd. Let's go over those 12 games. Love it. You have two games remaining against the Colorado Avalanche. Two go games ahead. remaining against the Vegas Golden Knights. Two go games ahead. remaining against the San Jose Sharks. And then one game apiece between the Winnipeg Jets, the LA Kings, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Ottawa Senators, the Seattle Kraken, and the St. Louis Blues. I don't know about you. That doesn't sound like too many points to me. That doesn't sound like too many wins to me. Maybe a couple overtime appearances. Maybe you go to the shootout and we we flip one into the corner and don't even record a shot on goal. But we're not going to get 
a lot of wins, I think, out of those final 12 games. Colorado, I mean, they, they are they're trying to lock in for the playoffs here. Like this, that, that's a team led oh, by Nate McKinnon that is like they they're have going. the horse race blinders on and they're thinking, we don't care what color yep. jersey, where you're from, we yep. are here showing up looking to put up six on you. And granted, yep. we saw that's very possible against the wild. The Winnipeg Jets, they're so stingy defensively. If they go out and play like they did on Wednesday night, or frankly, like we've seen in the in the past like week or so, the amount of like chances that just don't get finished by this team, especially by guys not named Kaprizov, is yeah. astonishing. It's like the yes. old the old joke is the yes. old joke is like all Swedish, no finish. Yeah, that's exactly what we have here. It, the, it's big time opportunities that I feel like other teams would just bury and find the back of the net, but the Wild. Uh, Zach Bogosian rings one 10 feet wide of the goal. Matt Boldy hits one off the or rings one off the pipe and it shoots up into the netting. It, you have to capitalize on these opportunities that you're putting yourself in a position to do so. Yep. They just can't put the period at the end of the sentence, which is just very frustrating to watch. Cause I think throughout the season, this has been an issue and maybe just chalk it up to bad luck or just bad execution on the final portion of that makes like the play actually work, but the amount of points that they could have had swing their way, if that's the case, um, the, the, the Kings and the Knights you just the Kings just steamboated you. So I don't expect much there. The golden Knights. I mean that those two games, they are going to look for blood. They, they are going to absolutely have no regard for human life and put you in the place that I think that wild fans are going to, that like, that's going to be beat downs, but the wild like, will try, but that, see, yes, here, yes, and that here's my and, problem. The Kings game that, that predators game in Nashville, they just gave up. They rolled over. It's why they don't deserve anything. Yeah. Uh, I will say this in, in watching the, um, uh, golden Knights cracking game last night, which was the second half of, uh, ESPN plus double header. Uh, the winning goal, if I'm not mistaken, by by the Golden Knights, which was scored late. And again, they didn't play great. Lo Logan Thompson and goal was really good. Um, yeah. The Kraken tied it up with like, I I don't know, five something left. Uh, the Golden Knights then scored very late in the game. And it was the go-ahead goal was, if I'm not mistaken, Chandler by Stevenson the, by the fourth line. Oh, excuse me. No, Keegan Colasar. Keegan Colasar. Yeah, who I think is on their fourth line right now. But the point is, it was a bottom six guy. The Wild doesn't even want to play its bottom six. Like every game that, that they're in, now, now of course, when they're getting blown out by the Kings or when they're playing the Ducks, and this is where these bad teams create such a misperception. Um, the Wild, you know, John Hines does not want to play his bottom six, and he sure as hell does not want to play his fourth line, which is weird because that fourth line's been credited with playing hard and doing a lot of the things that some of the top players don't do right now when they mm -hmm. decide that the game is done, although it's only in the first period. Yeah. So, so again, this is why the Golden Knights belong. This is why the Golden Knights, are they perfect? No. The other thing the Golden Knights did, though, before anyone's like, oh, the Wild, blah, 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 blah. Here's another thing. You know what they did? They banked a ton of points early. They banked, they got off to an unbelievable start, and we're all like, oh, the Stanley Cup champions are back. And now they've trailed off quite a bit, but they banked points early. What is the Wild exactly? And I'm with you, like, um, Kaprizov above this Faber, in my opinion, because he just played so well above yes. this, but you know, what is the wild done? Well, other than be streaky up and down. And it's very clear. The bottom six aren't really trusted. And the, and, and the fourth line's not, even though at times they tell you how great the fourth line is, you know, that's the thing about this. It's just, it's an absolute ruse. I actually think the blues are a better team than the wild right now, but the blues aren't a playoff team either. I don't want them in. I want the yeah. golden Knights in. Uh, but what we're going to see tomorrow is a hard fought game. Wild might win. And then we're going to have to hear all this crap again. Get <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, get it through your head. And this hurts us actually, because as a podcast, as a show, our show on YouTube, Judd's hockey show, it would help us if this team was in the playoffs because yeah. there's more excitement. We do the vent lines. They're awesome. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my own selfish want to do, to have this show be higher on the Apple charts is, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to tell you right now, these guys don't belong in the playoffs. They need to learn lessons. Um, 
John Hines needs to understand, and he does some good things. I like some things he does, but he needs to understand that if you're going to try and milk your top six and Kaprizov especially and play them as much as possible because you don't trust anyone else. You know what? Last night, Golden Knights, if I'm not mistaken, the leader on time on ice, Jack Eichel. Okay, so there you're saying, well, hold on a second, Judge. Jack Eichel's playing a ton. Do you know why a defenseman doesn't lead them in time on ice? Because they have so many good defensemen, they don't need to overtax any of them. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. And when push comes to shove, you roll over like so many wild teams have before. And that, to me, is absolutely disgusting. You cannot justify. You cannot come up with any good reason why a playoff team Goes and plays the Kings, a good team, but they ain't the 85 Oilers age, and plays like that. I'm done with them. To your point about relying on the top six, even let's say just the top three, because I'm going to read you something here in a second. Let's look at the Knights' five-on-five five play last night for their lines. Their top line, Barbashev, Eichel, Marshashow, 12 minutes, 50 seconds time on ice. Howden, Wa, Kolasar, seven and a half minutes. Dora Fayev, who frankly, I don't, I, I'm not quite sure who that is. Mm -hmm. uh, Carlson and Amadio, 727, Carrier, Stevenson, and Mantha, 557. That is pretty well dispersed, I would say. You have your clear top line, you have kind of a 2A, 2B, and then your, your fourth line. But the fact is, they're all above five minutes. They're all contributing. And like we, like you said, that fourth line, that had over seven minutes, got that game uh, go-ahead goal. Mm -hmm. Wednesday night for the Wild. Kaprizov, Rossi, and Zuccarello. Time on ice and five-on-five five play, 11 minutes and 33 seconds. You're clear number one. Okay. Second for time on ice, Felino, Hartman, and Boldy. Four minutes, one second. Seven and a half minutes of difference in time on ice from your top line and five-on-five five play to your second. What on earth are we doing? Do you not trust? Do we need to go and have team bonding sessions throughout the season? Well, just, I, I know I know John Hines got here in the middle of the year, but you have to trust some of these guys. And granted, I don't think we, we, we've seen that you really can't at times. But sure. you have to like, what are you going to find out if you're not playing more of these guys? Like why? Like Rossi, I yes, get him as much time, ice time as possible right now. Why on earth is Merit Husnadinov. We talked about this last. I know. I know. He, he, granted, he he hit fourteen thirty two, but you keep mixing and matching. How do you expect the guy that just got here two days ago to mesh and see what he can do with anybody comfortably? If you're juggling and well, you, like, get, get him on a line and let's let's go. Well, and John Hines also though is he he is he's trying to get this team in the playoffs. Like he's coaching for his job. He's got a multi year contract and he just got the job. You're not coaching for your job, dude. You're not coaching for your job. Don't worry about it. Like, what are you hoping to accomplish? We said this last show. You ain't the Florida Panthers who got in, I think, on the last day of the season last year, okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. That team was an underachieving group who, but who, by the way, got lit up by old man Kachuk, took it personally. They were really good, and then they took off, and we've seen that again right now. They're a really good team. Like, they are, to quote the kids and you age, they're a wagon. This ain't a wagon. <laughs> This is in no way, shape, or form a wagon. Now, the Wild plays tomorrow on Saturday, 1 o'clock at the X against the Blues. Then mm -hmm. they don't play again until Thursday and Saturday. Hopefully, this allows the teams ahead of them, i.e. the Golden Knights, to just pull away. Because I'm, I'm guessing that the Golden Knights are going to, they should, lose that game in hand at some point here soon. And so hopefully this allows them to just pull away and end this complete charade. But, um, you know, and do I think Brodeen is, if Brodeen comes back next week, I'll be amazed. I'm not sure about you. But to see his leg crumple like that, I that did not look good. Um, they lie in hockey constantly. I'm, I'm not even faulting them. They just do it. They lie constantly. Uh, and, and yes, him being out and Erickson Eck being out hurts, but that does not excuse you not showing up for games. And that does not mean that again, when I watch that, dude, you got to make decisions off that. If you're Bill Guerin and John Hines, what you saw against the Kings, you, there's no excuse for that. 
There is no excuse. You got beat six nothing. You left your poor goaltender. He was hung out to dry. And, and no, he was not great, but he was hung out to dry. And he saved your bacon. Your other goaltender who who you thought was your what one A, you don't totally trust now. Yeah. So like here, here's my thing. I don't care about the playoffs. Don't make the playoffs. Answer some questions though for me. Answer some questions for me. Because I've seen enough gutlessness now in a few games where there's a clear concern here. And you got to figure out, you know, who's on board here and who's not. Who's making excuses and who's not. Because I do not want a repeat of this again at the start of training camp, start of the regular season next season. You got to figure some bleep out here. Yeah. Get get some of these answers and or these questions answered. Yeah. And to your point, the fact that you're seeing your potentially the final games, and I say potentially because we don't we don't know yet of Mark Andre Fleury's NHL career. We don't know what his plan is after this season. And you go out in one of the handful of last games he could potentially play, and you just drop a dud. I want Billy G in the locker room poking guys in the chest. Why aren't you laying down in front of these shots? Why? Wh- where is the commitment level? And that's where, to your point, you need to know who's here mentally, physically, and who's checked out. And I, I think it's pretty apparent a couple of guys have already been checked out. Despite we're making the push, and we're going to see it tomorrow. Every, we're going to reel them back in, and every, oh, we're going to light the fire. Marcus and- Johansson showed up checked out, dude. Marcus <laughs> Johansson. Why why he hasn't been scratched. So So I do not agree. Just to be very, very clear here. Yep. The decision by John Tortorella, I think it's the past two games now. I'm pretty sure this took place again last night. Yeah. To scratch his captain. All right. Couturier, right? Couturier. Sean Couturier. I do not agree with that. Like, I think that is, a, I, I, I think that's probably a step to, because he named him captain in like February. Like, what are you doing? Don't yeah. name the guy captain. And then he's not playing well and scratch him. But, but I respect that a whole hell of a lot more. Then I respect leaving Joe Hansen in. For what? Like, how is he, how are you allowing this? And and I mean, th- this is a question for Bill Guerin too, because I mean, he is accountability. Like, that's what he's about, which I appreciate. How are you leaving this guy in your lineup game after game? And the other thing too, that this is a clear sign of is you got no depth. And, and it, yes, it's hopefully coming. Yes, I think the future is potentially bright. But you don't trust any of your depth guys, basically. You don't. No. You know, this fourth line, we were, a month ago, we were like, oh, over the moon about how hard they were working, and I thought they were. And then it's like, well, but when it's nut cutting time, they're all out. They're not going to play. And Marcus Johansson's still playing? Um, yeah, I'm, I, boy, I'm more worked up now about this because you got stuff to figure out here. And I'm sorry, I am finding a way to sever ties does jo- Johansson have a year left or is this his, or was this a one-year contract? Uh, Marcus Johansson next year, AAV of $2 million. I, I got no, I got no interest in, in him be, being back. I, I, I don't care if it's $2. I got no interest in, in him being back. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, he's making an ass of them. He's literally making an ass of them. How many times can he circle a net, not take a hit? You know, he took a hit and, Middleton, if I'm not mistaken, came to his defense and someone on X was right. They're like, why, why is he defending that guy? Let, let him to, you know, <laughs> you defend a teammate who, who is a teammate, not a teammate who thinks that his job is to skate on the outer, you know, and of course he got hit on the boards. You know, he didn't even get hit in the middle of the ice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Marcus Johansson to me is the poster child for what Bill Guerin was trying to eliminate. And he's made a fool of this franchise because he tried hard in a contract year. And now he's come back, you know, with absolutely no interest in playing. And I don't even think that that that's not even a controversial take. Let me ask you about maybe going back again to Wednesday here. Full transparency, just because of early mornings and the late night there, I, I, after the fifth goal, I was like, okay, I think this is, this is it for me. Sure. Can you fill me in on what happened with Ryan Hartman? Because I noticed he played less than 10 minutes of ice time. I'll get the exact number here. If I can find oh, the time here. Yeah, he got less lost. than 10 minutes of ice time. Yeah. He got and, he, 
851. It sounds like he was benched for the entirety of the second period and then started the third and then just fought like Pierre Luc Dubois. Is that is that correct? I don't remember. I don't remember being benched in the second. Okay. I wouldn't swear to the fact he was not. Um, but in the third period, he got into it with Dubois, who, by the way, is a punk. He's a punk. Man, the Jets robbed the Kings. Um, he's talented, but he is a he's a he is a minus teammate times ten. And so he got into it with Hartman, and Hartman had a dumb Hartman game. Hartman was taking penalties because he's frustrated, but that's mm-hmm. not like that's what makes him a bottom six guy. He did he does some stupid stuff. Um, he was pissed off because his turnover resulted in the first goal that you talked about, Fiala. Uh, Hartman blindly took the puck along the boards and tried to break out by passing okay. to the middle of his own zone. It got picked off by Fiala and then resulted in that goal. Uh, but, but then in the third period, early on, he got into it with Dubois. And that's the fra- that's the first fracas that blew up a little bit. And that's when Dubois wouldn't fight Hartman because he's a punk. And Hartman, want- Hartman wanted to fight yeah. him, to his credit. Yeah. And... Dubois then somehow got away from the official, like the official lost track of him. I think he thought he wouldn't fight. And he mm-hmm. went and Dubois went and tried to fight Faber. Yeah. And, Bro- and Brock's like, first of all, I'll kick your ass. Second of all, get out of here. Um, and so they both got, I think they both got tossed. I think they both got like two and 10 or 10 okay. and right. they were gone. And so that accounts for that. Um, and, and then there was the fracas, the end of the game where they gave everyone on the ice a 10, which was glorious, including, Jewel Erickson Eck, who wasn't in the arena. He wasn't even there. He was back home here. Um, but yeah, Hartman had Hartman had a Hartman I'm frustrated game, okay. which doesn't help you. Like that does nothing for you. Um, but yeah, no, he tried to break out. I'll never understand this. Explain this off the off your question. Why is the and the blues will do this tomorrow? And if you watch it, it'll drive you crazy. Why do teams that aren't that great use primary breakout patterns in their own zone through the middle of their own ice? I get I get trying to pass the puck and it might get picked off. I don't love this at center ice, but the, it's the neutral zone. It's called that for a reason. Mm-hmm. But there's a primary break play that's used that focuses on basically going through your slot. Your slot. So not mm-hmm. not not getting the puck into the opponents. Um, the blues do this left and right. And I mean, it's inexcusably stupid. They don't have enough good players to do it. Like I get it. If you're dealing with top line guys, if you're McDavid, dude, you can skate wherever you want. You can do whatever you want. You and dry sidle are beyond belief. Um, but like part of their primary breakout is to go, you know, boards, middle of the ice out. Well, that's great if it works. Yeah. But if you, but in Hartman's case, what he did was he didn't look, he assumed. So he assumed that what he had seen in, in his mind's eye was still the case. And of course, guys had moved, puck gets picked off. Right. Why, why is that a, why is, why wouldn't you try and break out along the boards more or certainly not by throwing the puck in front of what basically is your goaltender? Yeah, it, the, the breakout should be is simple in my mind, like you, you're, you're not reinventing the wheel here. You're Correct. looking to exit the zone and Correct. You, you're supposed to do it quickly and safely. That's what I was taught yes. quickly and safely. And where's the, where's the safest spot to be on the outside Judd? You, you, uh, let only in dire circumstances, if they are putting guys, they're doubling up on the half wall and it's wide open. Then well, sure. I get it. You know, you're, they're going to part, but my God, w- th- putting the puck willingly to the middle of your defensive zone. That's what I'm saying. That's hockey suicide. But it's like, but you're, watch you're St. asking Louis the other team. Yeah. St. Louis All loves right. with the, the game that they that the Wild just played against the Blues there. That was their primary breakout. And I understand you're, I'll, I'll you're keep an, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that tomorrow then because I didn't I know. understand your pros and you think you're good at it, but but I mean if I'm a coach, and I understand that 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 the boards aren't because of the amount of traffic there are an issue. But you better be damn sure, especially this time of year, because what disappears? Time and space. Mm -hmm. Well, space is pretty important if I'm going to use my, basically the middle of my ice in my zone. So anyway, all right. um, That's all I got. I just, 
I wanted to talk about this whole thing. I wanted to try and talk through it. Um, I, shame on me. And they're gonna beat. They're gonna beat some of these bad teams again. And then we're on like, the Wilds back. You know what? Just go home, watch the playoffs with us guys, and uh, go Golden Knights. Age, we'll talk to you.